Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another Top 5 Friday. Today we are in front of the Stephen King show, so it is a Stephen King themed episode. Today we are talking about the Top 5 Stephen King scenes for me, moi, me, myself, and I. So please don't get upset if your favorite scene isn't here, but I would love to hear from you down there in the doobly-doo on what your favorite scenes are. Uh, some of these might be a surprise, um, but the what what I do when, whenever I do any of these top five Fridays, I come out to the office, come out to my collection, and I look around for the theme. Um, well, not for the theme. I know the theme. I'm looking around for the things that fit the theme, and these are the first five books that I grabbed. Um, the same with any other Top 5 Friday I, that I do. Sometimes I miss them, some things that I love because I either don't own them or I didn't think about them at that point in time. Now, at number 5, number 5, Revival. The scene um, that I love so much in this, uh, for, first, so l let me go ahead and go back and start, start this over with a preface. Uh, that I'm not going to be doing endings because I've already done my top five favorite Stephen King endings. So what we are going to do is we are only talking about scenes that happen either somewhere between the beginning and just before the end matter of the book. So in this one, it's where uh, Reverend Jacobs, his oh spoilers for all the books on the on this list. Okay, I will do uh, the. The time signatures down there in the description, so if you want to skip ahead, you can. But uh, when after, so spoilers, again, for Revival, there's, there's a scene in here after Charlie Jacobs, the, re the Reverend's wife and child dies. I think it's, a child, it's been a while since I've read it, um, and it happens really early on in the book. Um, I can't remember if it's a boy or a girl, or if the wife is just pregnant. can't really remember, but it, it, it just utterly destroys this dude. And he gets up in front of his congregation, and he talks about losing. His, but it, he talks about his his faith. He has completely lost his faith, his faith, and how poisonous um, and bad religion is. And that that scene encapsulated kind of my um, my experience with religion. I'm not knocking you if you're religious, but that that it pretty much just sums up my experience with religion. I was a very devout Christian up until the point where I was 13, and then I just lost all of my faith. Uh, and it took very little. Um, so this this scene, of course, there's a lot more going on in this scene that happened in my life, but his speech is what really resonated with me. So that's number five, that scene in Revival. Next up, we have... Pet Cemetery. At number four, the scene, uh, it's, it, it has to be Gage's death. Every single time I have read this book, that scene has meant something different to me. I've read the book twice since I've been a father, um, and I read the book once before I was a father. It was very disturbing before I was a father. It was even more so after I was a father, and it was even more, more so after I was a father for the second time, um, because I, I couldn't imagine losing a child, but at the same time, a after my second child was born, I couldn't imagine the concept of not only losing a child, but having a child left and always seeing, this might sound terrible, maybe not, but always seeing, you know, that that, that one child, you know, with, how, how, do you, how do you react to something like that? How do you tell you know, your, your child that, that, that si their sibling has passed away. I, ca I, I can't even ima imagine that. Um, you know, it's, it's bad enough telling someone that you love and care for, an adult that you love and care for, that someone close has died. But to tell a child that this, this other human being that they have lived with, it, 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 ju it, just, it just destroys me. And it's one, of the most, it's one of the most affecting scenes Stephen King has ever written. And the, the brilliance of the scene, and I hear people complaining about it all the time, about Stephen King's uh, for, forced foreshadowing throughout the book, because we, we let, we, he lets us know that the boy is going to die. He lets us know several times to try and I, not really ease the blow, but kind of just to ease you into it. It's like, things are going to get very, very ugly here in a minute, and so you don't hate me, 
I'm letting you know ahead of time. And I actually think it's a very it's it's a very smart move on his part because if that scene had come out of absolutely nowhere, I I don't think that the book would be as well regarded uh, widely as it is. The same way with um with Jack Ketchum's The Girl Next Door. With that book, it's not as widely accepted because Jack just he just kind of hits you with all all of that content with really no no prequel precursor precursor and no warning all right so next up we have at number three the shining so um i i will forever say this i will die on this hill forever the scariest part of this book really the only scary part of this book for me is the topiary animals not the fire hose not jack's descent into madness uh not room uh two thirty oh shoot i don't forget two I can't remember what the... Ooh, Lord Jesus. Uh, so I always want to say 217, but that's not right. Um, let's see. Is it, two, it is 217. It's like 230-something in the movie, isn't it? I can't remember. Oh, Lord. Hang on. Yeah, it's, it's 217 in the book because it adds up to, to 19. I'm going to leave all that in. I I don't remember all, all of this stuff right off the top of my head. He's got 70-some-odd books. But anyways... So, uh, yeah, the topiary animals in The Shining have long disturbed me. The, the scene with Jack and the topiary animals is, is fine and it's creepy, but the one that bothers me the most, the one that always, and I'm currently rereading this, so this is very fresh in my mind, is the scene where Danny goes out and he climbs into the snow tunnel, and then when he comes out, all of the, the, the topiary animals, the hedge animals, if you don't know what topiary means, um, the hedge animals, they, they've all moved. And that scene, for me, is not only, it, it's, it is terrifying. Um, so, it, I'm not, it's not here because it's the scariest scene. It's just so well written. It is brilliantly placed, and it, it, it comes at the perfect time in the book. It's starting to get a bit monotonous and slow, and then here we have the scene with Danny and the hedge animals. Um, but the, the way he builds the dread, you know because beforehand... Uh, Jack has seen these, well not seen, you never actually see them move in the book. It's always implied that they have moved, which is another genius joke, I think. But uh, you, you have it set up with Jack, and you think maybe Jack is going to end up being attacked by the, the hedge animals. But then Danny ends up, he's the one who ends up, and while he's out there, you know what's coming. That's, that's the best part about it. You know what's coming. You know he's out there with these dang things that move because, you know, Jack had the same experience earlier on in the book. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, that's number three. Okay, at number two, this might be controversial opinion. I don't know. Um, anytime I think about this book, this absolutely beast of a book, this absolute unit of a book, this is the scene that comes to mind. I am not a huge fan of this book because the middle of it is so, so boring to me, but it's the scene in the stand with the kid and Trash Can Man and Trash. Um, the, he, <laughs> mind your ears, children, <laughs> if you're upset, but he rapes Trash with, uh, the kid rapes Trash with a uh, a handgun. I think it's a pistol. I can't. Uh, is it a revolver? I think it's a revolver. But please let me know down there in the doobly doo whether or not I'm wrong. That scene really bothered me. Um, it's it's not only it's not only the rape, but is it is the object that is used to rape. Um, it, it's a disgusting scene. Um, it, it's it's one of those things that just made me feel wholly uncomfortable. That scene to me is more powerful and more poignant than anything Richard Lehman has ever written as far as rapey scenes are concerned, or even Dean Koontz, anybody else. That scene really, really bothered me. It has nothing to do with two dudes. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the, the utter assault and the violation that that happens to Trash. And Trash to this day it has always been one of my favorite characters in the Stephen King universe. It, you, you see his you see his descent in into madness just like with Jack Torrance. Stephen King has always done that well, by the way. And Trash was crazy to begin with, but it gets even worse. Um, and I I I can't wait to find out whether or not the scene is in the original version of The Stand because I have not read it yet, but I will be reading it in November. So if anybody's looking forward to uh, if anybody wants to, 
or is already looking forward to it, we're going to do the stand. We'll probably start the stand on November 1st. Um, we, I don't know if we'll be doing a chapter a day. Um, I don't know how long we're going to go because there's certain sections of this book that I can read, you know, 100 pages at a time easy. There's also certain sections of this book that I, I can't stand. So uh, it'll be like a 10-page day kind of thing. But yeah, number two is uh, the scene with Trash and the kid, uh, the, the, the rape scene. Um, and I know it's weird to say, like, it's my favorite scene, but it, it's one of the more, it's one of the, it's the, it's the second most affecting scene for me. Um, that, it, it's just one of those things that sticks in your mind. It just, it just roots in, it's insidious, and it just sticks there. Okay, so at number one, which is kind of themed for the week, I mean, we all know what comes out this week. We, we all pretty much know what book this is, because it is my favorite Stephen King book. In fact, I was thinking about doing a top five scenes from this, but I want to wait until the, the second movie gets farther out. But yes, it is... From it, the number one scene on this list, for me, and I know there's a lot of people who disagree with this, but it's the mummy scene. Out there, in the snow, in the ice, in the cold, Ben on the bridge, looking down and seeing the mummy, and then the crawling clown. The, the whole scene is ingenious. I, th I feel, once again, th this is all subjective opinions. I, the only reason I'm harping on this is my opinion is because I have, I've had three comments in the past week say the scene isn't all that great. For me, it is. Um, the scene, I, th I feel the scene is the most terrifying and the best written scene in the book. Only, well, I don't want to go into what, what else I would put on this list because I would love to do just the top five scenes of this book, period, if I could nail it down to just five scenes. Um... But anytime I think of this scene, that's the one that pop. Uh, sorry, this book. Anytime I think of this book, that's the scene that pops into my head. Um, the, there, there's something so ominous and and bothersome. Uh, and I and I hope I have not yet. This this is being filmed earlier in the week, so I have not seen it chapter two. But I'm really hoping that the scene is in there or they figure out some way of doing the scene, either with the adults or whatever it is, because it is, it's one of my, fa my favorite scenes. I'm hoping the scene with Adrian Mellon um, is in it. Uh, there's so much that I want to see in there. Um, but I would especially love to see Machete, especially him, do this scene justice. Um, the, I, I, I'm not, uh, but I'm not entirely sure why the scene works so well for me. And it, there's a lot of dread involved. In fact, there's a lot of dread in most of the stuff that uh, I, I that that sticks with me, um, more more so than scenes maybe like you know the the rape of trash. Uh, the the it's the, those scenes that that are not really there, but they're they're implied. Now there is a lot in the scene that is shown, but the dread building up to that moment, and then the final end of that scene. I feel is just absolutely amazing. So you know how we do. Let me know your top five Stephen King scenes down there in the doobly doo, and let me know what you think of these these individual scenes, and if that maybe they fall on your list as well, or if you don't like them, let me know why you don't like them. I don't mind different opinions as long as you're not rude about it. But until next time, I have been E. You have been you. This has been another book. No, it's another book review. It's. <laughs> It's a top five Friday. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye bye. Hey, by the way, um, I will be doing a review of it chapter two tonight. Um, when I get well, the the night that I go see it, the night that I get back, I will be putting the the review up. I'm not sure at this point in time if I'm going uh, Thursday or Friday, but as soon as I see it, I will come home and give you guys a review. Um, I may even try to talk Shell into it so we can get another point of view from someone who hasn't actually read the book. But, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm super, super excited. Um, and if you guys have, have seen it, let me know what you thought down there. But please, 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 with the spoiler alert for, for anybody who hasn't, uh, and also for me, just in case I haven't seen it yet, please put spoiler alert for It Movie at the beginning of your comments. Thanks. Bye.